All right. So in the previous labs, we've been working with imagery that came from a DJI Mavic camera, which is just RGB imagery. And in this lab and the next one, we're going to switch it up and look at multispectral data and how we can process multispectral data into uh, orthomosaics and point clouds and elevation models uh, with Metashape as well. So. I have uh, some imagery that we collected out at Parker Farm on the 5th of October using the Mica Sense Red Edge camera, which is a five band multispectral camera. And uh, I've got it open here in uh, Windows Explorer. And so it's in this uh, folder here called, uh, you know, 0003 set. And if I open it up, there's a couple of folders within that. Uh, the way the MicaSense camera works is it will collect a whole bunch of photos into uh, this first directory until it reaches a certain number and then it'll create another directory and then add photos into that, right? So you can have multiple photos here just depending on how many, uh, you know, total exposures that you had in your, in your mission. But let's go in here and uh, just open this up and take a look at what's going on here. So notice that all these photos are in black and white and uh, that's because the mica sense camera actually consists of five separate uh, sensors five separate lenses on that camera and each one samples a different portion of the uh, electromagnetic electromagnetic spectrum and so each one is, is black and white and then we'll use metashape to kind of assemble those together and so if i look at this photo here notice the this is image triple uh, four underscore one. So this is the first image uh, here and then all the way up to the fifth image. So all five of these together are one click of the shutter button in the MicaSense camera. And so <clears throat> let me open this up here just so we can look at it in the, uh, um, in the photo viewer. And uh, you know you can see some nice patterns here. So so image one corresponds to the blue band, and uh, as I click the next arrow here, that's going to take me to the next one, which is uh, going to be green, and then red, and then red edge, and then finally near infrared. Okay, so um, that's how these things are are sort of ordered. But notice. How I, if I go back and forth, these images are moving around, okay? And that's because each one of these has a different position on the camera, and so the principal point of the photos is slightly different for each one. Um, that can pose a real challenge if you were just trying to smash these things together and merge them, but using Metashape, we can uh, actually use that in the bundle block adjustment phase, it's going to uh, sort of line all these photos up for us, which is also really a, a handy thing to, to do. So let me close out of here. We'll uh, minimize that. And uh, so I've got a new project in Metashape. First thing we want to do is add our photos here. So we're going to use add folder. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. And then um, let's see, I want the one from the 5th of October. And I can just select that uh, folder here. And it's going to read all the images that are in that folder. OK, so now this is a new option for us. So um, because each of those uh, bands from a single photo is a separate file, then we need to tell it that it's a multi-camera system. All right. So, so there are 294 total exposures, but the total number of images that we have is five times that. So we have about 1,500 images that represent 294 clicks of the, of the shutter button on the camera. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. It's going to uh, load those things in, which might take it a second to do. All right. Now I got this thing that looks like a warning message, but this is actually a good thing. So um, the MicaSense camera, the MicaSense sensor itself is a calibrated multispectral sensor. And we have these uh, images of the calibration panel. 
that will allow us to convert the values that we get in the images to uh, surface reflectance. And MicaSense is just telling us, hey, I found some uh, photos here that correspond to a calibration plate. And I disabled those so they don't mess with your uh, photo alignment, and I moved them into a separate folder. So that's actually a good thing. That's what we want. Okay. Now, let's uh, kind of take a look here at what we got. So we've got a whole bunch of photos here. Um, and uh, this is actually data from a couple of different uh, things that we were doing during that flight. And so there's some images here that we don't need. And so let's kind of spin this up and look at it from the side uh, here. And you can see that I've got a whole set of images at one altitude. I've got a smaller set from a higher altitude, and then I've got some images that it looks like it took kind of on its way up or way down. And then these guys here that are light blue, those are our reference panel images that it's already turned off. Okay, so what I want to do now at this point is uh, I want to select and disable sort of all of these upper elevation images and then all of these guys in here, and I can just do that with the uh, with the select tool here. Okay, and then once I've got them selected, I can come down here and find them and then just disable these cameras. Okay, so now you can see they're all light blue. Same thing in here. I just want to turn these guys off because we're not going to end up uh, using these uh, images. We just want this set in the middle here. Okay. All right, so now at this point, we're getting close to uh, being able to do our image alignment, but we want to look at a couple of things first. So up here in the Tools menu, I'm going to choose Camera Calibration first, and I want to kind of note a couple of things. So first of all, there are five separate sensors that make up this camera. This is different than what you'd see if you had like DJI imagery, which would just be one, right? Um, this is a frame camera, so it does not have a rolling shutter, so we, we want to make sure that that is not uh, checked, where there's no rolling shutter compensation to use. Okay, um, And we have parameters for all of these uh, um, you know, attributes of the lens model, and that's because the MicaSense camera is a calibrated camera, so they've actually measured what these things are uh, for the lens that's in the camera. And if I click on each one of these, notice that the parameters change because each one of them is in a different position um, on, the, uh, on the physical camera itself. Okay, so that's sort of first thing to note, right? Second thing is if I click over here to the bands, then that gives me some sort of information about like, like what are the different band values that we have. And then there's this normalized band sensitivity option. We're going to leave that alone for now, but we'll, we'll come back to that. And what that's going to do is uh, allow MicaSense, or not MicaSense, allow MetaShape to uh, adjust for any color differences between these images, at least to the best that it, that it can. All right, so we're not going to really change anything in here or, or, or mess with this too much. I just did wanted to point this, uh, this out. All right, so go ahead and click out of that. And then the one thing we do need to do, though, to start with is bring in this reflectance panel information so that we can um, do the conversion to uh, reflectance values. Okay? Uh, before I do that, I did want to point out, and just remember this, that um, within each of these images, okay, it's only showing us the first image of the set of five. Okay, So this is the blue band values or the blue band images for, uh, for for each one of these, okay? And it's doing that just so that you don't have to look at like five duplicate uh, ones, okay? Uh, you can change which one that you want it to, to display or use by coming up here in, in the Tools menu and selecting Set Primary Channel. Uh, for most of the time, it's, it's fine to just leave it uh, like it is, okay? At least I find it is. All right, so now let's go up to Tools, and we're going to go Calibrate Reflectance. And this is going to open up a, a, a box here where um, it, it's, it listed our images that it found reference panels in. 
and then it's going to give us a chance to sort of load the reference uh, data for that for that panel. So this is a little bit confusing. Um, there is a uh, uh, set of instructions that Metashape, uh, that Agisoft publishes on how to uh, sort of work with MicaSense imagery in Metashape, and this part is not very clear in the uh, in the instructions. But so Metashape found that these two images have reflectance panels in them, but it has not actually like located the panel in the image. And so we need to click this button here, and uh, it's going to take a second and actually like scan through these images and find that uh, the panel in there and then each the panel has a QR code and and that QR code is the unique identity of that specific panel okay so every panel that that they produce that Microsense produces gets a unique ID number and a unique QR code and then they do a, a wavelength calibration on that panel and so we will we have a file here that we'll upload in a second that will give it the, uh, or, or sort of tell MicaSense, tell MicaSense, tell Metashape the uh, actual reflectance values to use for, uh, for calibrating the, the bands, okay? Okay, so we can see here that it actually found the, uh, the, the sort of panel, the unique panel identifier uh, here. Um, over here on the side, then we need to, uh, tell it sort of or give it the uh, official calibration file for that panel and uh, I've already sort of loaded it in that's why it's showing up here but if you haven't loaded it in before then you just sort of uh, click the open button there and then it's this CSV file that I'll make available to everybody for the for the lab but that's the one that you want you just click that and open it then you'll be able to select it here and hit OK all right, and now it's going to supply the actual reflectance values. Right? The other thing that the MicaSense uh, camera has is a downwelling light sensor that, that measures the incoming radiation uh, to help it with that uh, reflectance uh, calibration. Uh, so we need to make sure that that option is turned on, and then we can go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to uh, calibrate all of these images for us. And you'll notice that it just turned all of them black here uh, down in the photo tray. They're not actually black. It just sort of changed the brightness values of them. Okay, so we can we can fix that here by coming to Tools and Set Brightness. And uh, I think we're going to want sort of a, a brightness value of something around 600. Um, let's see what that does. Yeah, we could probably go a little bit brighter even. Let's see, 700. This is just really like for, for visual purposes, right? And, and uh, you know, kind of working with these images. Um, this doesn't actually affect any of the products that you'll get in the output. So we'll go ahead and hit OK there. That's good enough for now. So at this point, we're ready to, to work the standard process for uh, aligning the photos and creating the products throughout the uh, uh, structure from motion workflow. I'll point out a couple of things here. So uh, uh, standard options here for our general alignment. Uh, we can turn the adaptive camera model fitting off because we actually already have really good uh, values for those uh, uh, for the lens model. Okay, and then we'll hit OK here and uh, let that go. I'll pause while this runs. Um, it should go pretty fast, but uh, we'll pick up when it when it's done here and uh, and then look at the optimization steps. Okay, so we're done with our photo alignment and it uh, looks like everything aligned pretty well. Uh, we've got a nice uh, looking model here to start with and uh, we're ready to start our optimization uh, of this. The one thing that I wanted to point out that I've noticed is that uh, with the Mica Sense camera, it's easy to uh, over optimize this model and so if you get too crazy with the optimization steps then when you go to build your dense point cloud then it you end up with some kind of weird results it'll it'll not reconstruct certain areas or it'll it'll uh, uh, have kind of strange artifacts so uh, when you optimize you know it's a it's a fairly kind of uh, uh, gentle optimization if we want to call it that so uh, but but standard process here um, for the for the optimization um, just like we've done with the other 
image sets. Um, so I will uh, just kind of put instructions for that, those optimization uh, uh, steps in the uh, instructions for the lab, and uh, and we can go from there. I won't sort of do all of that uh, in the in the video here. And once you're done with the optimization and building the dense cloud, building the elevation model, uh, all those things are uh, you know just like with. Uh, the other image sets that we've worked with. And so I will pause here and we'll pick it back up when we create the ortho mosaic. All right, I've gone as far as creating my DEM uh, from the, the multispectral imagery here and we're ready to do our ortho, but there's one couple of things that we want to do first. I'm gonna first come up to tools and camera calibration and uh, just show you or point out that uh, if I look at the band uh, sort of tab for each of the different sensors, then the normalized band sensitivity option is now turned on. And the reason that's turned on is that we've calibrated the images, and so Metashape is now expecting to use that calibration and adjust for the uh, um, for the differences in exposure of each of the images. Okay, which will just give us a better looking ortho mosaic at the end. All right, so when we come to uh, create our ortho mosaic, a um, couple of things to note. Um, you know, we're doing it from the DEM. We've got about a four centimeter pixel size here. For the blending mode, I found the best results by using an average uh, rather than the uh, than the mosaic. Um, but you know, you can play around with that and see which one you like the best. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward uh, to, to do this. And so once we get this uh, ortho mosaic here, I'll pause and come back and, and show it to you. All right, so here's our ortho mosaic for the multispectral imagery. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's not the best time of year. We got a lot of shadows and stuff, but but in general, it, uh, it's stitched together pretty nice. Um, and uh, it's going to be a good product for us to work with in the next lab coming up. So that's it for this lab. Um, what I would like you to do is go ahead and uh, you know go to uh, export and generate a report uh, for this. We'll have you submit that report uh, for the lab write-up. And then next time for the part two of this, we're going to pick up at this point and uh, look at how we can do some raster transformations to calculate some indices from this multispectral data. And then we'll, we'll actually export it from uh, Metashape and look at it in uh, in QGIS or ArcGIS and uh, what we can do with the imagery there. So uh, that's it for this time and we'll see you uh, with the next lab.